one and one and one. And so it's it's definitely going to be interesting. We've seen this in 2020 when the race season got completely canceled. So if you finish in that spot, that's where you're at. So, I mean, Duluth had plenty of snow, but there's always that chance. But we'll see you in Duluth. But let's I can't wait to see the racing tonight. Absolutely. And like we said, I, I do believe there will be an extra sense of urgency here today. Everybody is so excited to hit the track after the, that one got canceled. But before we kick off all the racing action, I've got Chaplain Ethan Day for a quick prayer. Let's come to the Lord. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we just uh, thank you for the opportunity to get to do what we love. Um, this beautiful white snow, these racers will get to, uh, to rip, and uh, it's going to be an, an amazing night of racing. Lord, we also just want to lift up our veterans to you right now um, as they get to protect our, our freedom uh, to be able to do what we love. So we um, have to lift them up to you. Lord, we also pray uh, that every way you will be uh, glorified, good, bad, and, or indifferent, on and off the track, Lord. We just want to lift you up and uh, prioritize you. And uh, Lord, just please have your hand of protection over each and every one of these riders and uh, pit crew, mechanics, uh, track crew, spectators. Let's just have an amazing night, Lord. And we ask all this in the, uh, your name, Jesus. Let's go racing. Amen. Now I get to the pleasure of, an, of saying my mom is going to be singing the national anthem, Kim Woody. Thanks. And on behalf of Woody's Racing, it's an honor and a privilege. Thank you. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red and glare, the bombs burst in, in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, see, does that start spangled banner get away o'er the land of the free and the whole of the brave? All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the top five in the Amsoil Pro Point standings coming into this round 12 ERX Snowcross National. And we're going to start with our number five position. He rides for Woody's Racing on an Arctic Cat, sponsored by Idahoan Foods, FXR, Sunoco Race Fuels, General Formulations, Nitro Lubricants, as well as Minnesota Truck Headquarters, Fox Shocks, CNA Pro Skis, Stud Boy, Rock Speed Effects, and City Braces. He's had a good season, a very good season, especially in the second half. Give a warm welcome to Deer River, Minnesota's Daniel Benham. Dan, you've attributed a lot of your success this second half of the season to some clutching changes and some stellar starts. Do you feel like the start will be pivotal again here this weekend, or do you think that some more passing opportunities will emerge on this track? As always, the start is super critical. Um, unfortunately, we've had one of the toughest winners that I've, I've ever seen. So the tracks have been really small, which only makes the start even more important. Um, it is nice we have uh, some more snow here, some cool obstacles. Um, but yeah, I think, as always, it's going to be very critical. Well, thankfully, you are stellar there. So best of luck out there tonight. <laughs> Coming into today in the number four spot in the point standings, another Arctic Cat rider for Kylo Racing, sponsored by Arctic Cat and Fly Racing, along with advanced grain handling systems, Country Cat, Stein, and DDS Fluids. 
It has also been a good second half of the season for this racer with a brand spanking new race team coming in today in the fourth spot in the Amsoil Pro Point standings. He is aboard the number 727 from Grand Blanc, Michigan, Jacob Yerk. Jake, you said that you've been happy capturing all of these second and third place finishes, but there's still more you're searching for and to be able to capture that big win. Any change of approach coming into this weekend to do just that in these last two rounds or business as usual? Uh, business as usual. What we've been doing is working. Uh, you know, I don't want to I don't want to get too greedy about it. We want to stay consistent and stay off the ground. So as long as we do that, we find ourselves in the front. Looking forward to seeing you back out there tonight. Best of luck. Coming into this round 12 in the third spot in the point standings, one of two riders, the Quebecois, will be pulling for here this evening. This rider from Chicatumi, Quebec, rides for Warner Racing on a Skidoo, sponsored by Makita, Skidoo, FVP Parts, NTN, along with GMC, XPS, KYB, as well as Enzo Canada and Speedworks. He is a rookie in the Amsoil Pro class this season, but has already picked up a couple of overall wins in this Amsoil Pro Triple Crown format, and that's why he is sitting right now in the number three spot in the Amsoil Pro point standings. How about it for the 5'11 of Jordan LaBelle? Jordan, our number one qualifier going into tonight's racing, what were you finding out on track that allowed you to throw down such a fast time and give you the number one gate pick for round one? Um, I had a good lot time during the whole time, and then uh, for the last couple of laps, I kind of struggled finding lines, and I dropped down to seven, and I saw a mechanic uh, tell me I was pick seven, and uh, I saw the white flag, and I just told myself, like, that's like, the time to shine. Like, you have to put on a good lap to have a good qualifying so we can have a good night, and... Yeah, P1. It all paid off here tonight. Looking forward to seeing you out there in round one. Sitting in the runner-up spot in the Amsoil Pro point standings is the racer who makes up the other half of the Quebec tag team in the top five, riding on the Thien Motorsports Skidoo. He's from saint Felicier, Quebec. Sponsored by Skidoo, FXR, North American Trailer, Aluminum Cabinet Company, and Classic Construction. On the number 220, Francis Peltier. Francis, we have a larger track and layout here this weekend. What do you think will be key in finding your way back to the podium? Yeah, for sure it's a, it's a small track, so corner speed's gonna be a key for sure. Best of luck out there tonight. And coming in with a 32 point advantage over Francis Peltier. He's in a spot he's been in for a while, quite a few rounds actually. He is from Burzon, Sweden, running for Jednik Motorsports on a Polaris. So we call him the king of the Triple Crown. He's got more wins in this format than any other racer. He's sponsored by Polaris, Climb, Wild River Jerky, Core RV, SSI decals, Cutler Express, Walker Evans Racing, and Stud Boy. The moose is loose. It's the number 31, Emil Har. Emil, you are coming off an absolute dominant weekend as you topped both qualifiers, won five out of six rounds, and won both overalls in our previous round. What do you credit those standout performances to? I know, I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, last race was a really good race, and yeah, it's a new weekend now. It's a, it's a new track. A lot of stuff can happen. It's a tight track again. So uh, yeah, I just try to be positive and. Uh, yeah, try to be smooth and have fun, and hopefully we'll have a good weekend again. Looking forward to seeing you back out there tonight. Best of luck. Racers talking about the fact that this track is small. That's relative. It's smaller than the usual ERX track, but the layout here is a pretty technical one. Take us around, Robbie. Yeah, that's right. Here we go on the start. It's going to be a slight right into the course here, and then we got multiple choices through here. Can be tabletop, triple, single, double, you name it. A little bit of a step up into a split lane. And this is going to be key, this section right here, because if you go wide, you can see it's a little lower ramp right there. You can stay lower, get on the gas sooner, get to that finish line, and then launch into this corner. If we're catching some pretty big air into another left-hander, and that is a lap 
here in ERX. And kudos to the ERX crew for getting it together for us here this weekend. How about we get the party started proper and do a little racing here? Let's open up round one of Pro Light Qualifying. Three heat races, two rounds of qualifying. At the end of the three rounds, add up the points. Ten lowest point scores, one for a win, two for a second, three for a third. Go to the front row of the final. Everybody else goes to an LCQ where the top five will advance to the back row. As you look at the lineup for this race here, heat number one, got some sound with talent in here. We sure do. Red plate holder, Creighton Dillon. Lined up on that fifth spot. Pay attention to that bright yellow. Skidoo, Thien Motorsports. Oh, and oh. he jumps the start. Oh, that is not a good way to open up your round. Good way to open up the round for Eric Downs, but uh, Dylan dropped all the way back. Yeah, and then look at this. But Whoa. he didn't let everybody go. So watch for a black flag here, because there was a another rider hanging back there. So we'll see what they come up with, but Craig and Dylan going from last to first. And you might see some of them long jumping from the end zone finish line clear down into the Polaris turn. One of the guys that is doing that, trying to make hay on the outside is Emmerich Legendre on the number 44. Right now he is in a battle with Eric Downs for that second position. Dylan, nice little pirouette there. It's almost like ripping the lift coming off that berm. Yeah, and they're letting him race, so they obviously don't see something that I or saw that I did, but what do you got there, Paul? We got Downs on the inside, and Legendre, again, he's staying to the outside all the way around, so he's taking the top lane in both the split lane and then over on the opposite end of the track as they hit the step up at the end of the canoe section. Legendre is going to rip that outside. Now, you can see how there's that little booter there on the inside lane, so the outside could be a little bit smoother, and again, Legendre going for the long jump. And there's plenty of options out there, but again, the track is fresh right now. It's going to be hard. It's going to... To, to make up the time, so you're gonna wait for it to break down a little bit, and you can see Downs trying to get that triple. Yeah, and Legendre had a little bobble there, and uh, I thought for a minute they were gonna get together, and they just did. And Legendre pops off the booter there into the number two spot, about two and a half seconds behind Creighton Dillon. Yeah, Creighton Dillon's just hanging out up front, not checking out yet. Track being a little smooth, nothing to separate these guys, but. See Creighton all year long. He's been out front, checking out, riding so smooth, so technical. So a few laps left to go here in this first round, first race of Pro Light. And the interesting thing here for the Pro Light racers is round one is in relative daylight conditions compared to usually being under the lights all the time. Yeah, you're going to be changing. Oh, look at this. Evan Christian just made two. Got a two for one on that deal right there. That may be the move of the night. We're only on the first race. Yeah. Wow. What a line. You can see him launch that finish line. So Evan picking up two spots, moving himself into third. He's right there behind Legendre. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Evans making a hand on the inside, tries to get a triple there, kind of cases it, and then has to fight it to get it up and onto the step up there on that red Casey Motorsports Polaris behind the black and yellow sled. That's Emmerich Legendre running in the second spot right now. The white flag is waved. Yeah, pay attention to Evan. He's got a line there. See if he can get that again. He's going to get the triple, closes the... The gap up a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And oh, look at the flare there from Creighton Dillon. Getting a little tail whip action going, and that wasn't even off the finish line. Jeff Legendre holds off Evan Christian, followed by Eric Downs. Dillon Rose will bring that Lynch trucking sled in behind Andy Leaders. Riding in Pro-Light tonight, he'll be in Pro-Am Plus 30 tomorrow. And it'll be Krejcik, Uman, and Kale Callen. And then Devin Denman will complete the field for the first race here in Pro Light this evening. We'll get ready for heat race number two. And uh, we're going to have uh, one rider in the field here, at least. Actually, two that are going to be, well, one that's pulling double duty. Jesse Kirchmeyer focusing specifically this season on the Southside Polaris sled in Pro Light. But... Polaris uh, rider Troy Horbati, different story. He'll be on the snow bike later on. Yeah, he's going to be pulling double duty, and right now he's got to focus on the snowmobile because he's got a stiff 
competition out there. You got Nick Lorenz. He's been fast all season. Coming out of New York with two wins. And yeah. Drew Freeland as well had a come from behind race in South Dakota. Got everybody talking. Now in the pro life point standings coming into this race, a 77 point gap. Biggest lead of any of the uh, pro classes, 77 points over Nick Lorenz on that number two that's lined up next to Horbani with Freeland ripping from the very inside here. And then Archibald and Shepard as we go up the line all the way up to the outside where Topi is. That countdown clock will hit zero and we'll be ready to go racing. Oh, good attempt at the launch there from Bailey Force. They're all going to get jammed up, and from the inside, it's Freeland. Oh, wow, Freeland getting a little squirrely, oh. but he hangs on to it. Ride him, bucking Bronco Cowboy. I like that. Oh, oh and he's going to get hip checked. Good night now. Now, Archibald paying a little and, payback there. And look Freeland. at this. Yeah, Freeland Free jumps right back into it. Yeah, he long jumps, and I think he's feeling a little extra motivated right now, shall we say, as he oh. almost draws, even then tilts the sled over. Look out. Ah, oh. oh, Freeland got the worst end of that stick. That is not good, and Archibald, he's out front. And... Yeah, the racing gods were very unfriendly right there, so Archibald will be the leader for Bonnie now in second. Lorenz third. Let's look at this one more time, Robbie. Yeah, he's just on the outside. Bad spot, but look at Ar Archibald shuts the door, and that wow. is it for Freeland. That was hardcore for sure. Archibald on the Polaris holds on to the lead. Lorenz in second. Then you've got the Horabati 157 right behind him there. The red and white Polaris led running in third. He doesn't do the long jump. It's about a 50-50 split right now of those that are jumping their way into the Polaris turn off the M12 finish line. Those that are short jumping it and then just riding that uh, single in yeah, the corner. You're right, but Lorenz has found a faster line in that rhythm section right now. So he's closed up to the back of Archibald, so watch for this. A pass could be coming if Archibald does not correct his line, and it looks like it's already going to happen right there. Wow, and that didn't really take much effort out of Lorenz. He just stayed committed there on the outside. He gets the triple in the middle of the skidoo rhythm section before the step up, and he is gone. Yeah, that really separated him, and that is what you need to do. Pay attention to those lines. They're going to change all night. Right now, the track is perfect. It's easier when it is like this, but you can see he's gonna double, just get this triple. It's getting hard for the riders to get over it too. You can see he's just about casing it. So he's gonna come around here and should see the two to go signal this time. We'll check the gap between him and Archibald. I imagine it's bigger. Oh yeah, about a half a second just in that last lap. And Archibald changed up his line. He's following Lorenz. He's gonna try to take that to the memory bank and think about that later tonight. And you see they're lapping Freeland. Unfortunate for him. The Archibald will arc down here and drop down before the M's oil finish line jump and get the white flag. So final lap underway in what has been a uh, pretty eventful second heat here in round one of Pro Light. Now pay attention to this though. Archibald is going to be lapping Freeland here pretty soon. And we got one lap to go. I don't think it'll be a big deal, but Freeland. You think he's not real happy, you can see. You throwing. thinking Logano Kenseth right about now? Because yeah. I am. <laughs> sure. Checkers come out. And the win goes to Lorenz. And then Archibald Force. Looks like uh, Topi Posty coming through. Balu almost snagged him there. Coming across the end zone finish line. Gap of about half a sled between fourth and fifth. That was a little action pack. Get us started here. We've got one more Pro Light Heat to go, and then we'll get ready for our first Amsoil Pro Triple Crown race. Appreciate all of you joining us here from wherever you are watching around the country and around the world on Flow Racing, and for all the great folks who have come out here on a pretty darn perfect evening for snowcross racing for this time of year. We appreciate you being here as well. Final Heat of Pro Light, we're looking across the line. There's Showtime, Jesse Kirchmeyer. That Southside number 42, Trent Whitworth on the 115. Adam Ashline, number four man in points, Anson Shield, number five man in points, Kenny Mandrick all in this heat race. And Corin Todd, like Andy Leaders, getting a little pro light warm up before he races Pro Am Plus 30 tomorrow.
Yeah, those two names on the start lined up right next to each other. They're the ones you're going to want to pay attention to. They're the preferred spot on that starting line. And these two, they don't mess around. Oh, the no. Two of the bigger riders out there. And yeah, and if there's one thing we saw in that last heat race, this racetrack is elbows up like a short track. It sure is. You're going to want to pay attention to your inside and not let anybody take advantage of that space. So... Ooh, good pull for the outside from Whitworth, but that's a long way to go. And it's going to be Mandrick and Ashline. See who can get that triple. No one does it this time around. Ooh, Ashline. Yeah, strong oh. step. Oh, front end to back end contact between two slits. So we're running second and third. That might have been Mandrick and Shield. No, Shield's in second. That looks like the uh, 36. That's Corn Todd and the 671 of Mitchell Gross who are involved. That was a gnarly one. Yeah, that was not good, and yellow flags will be flying. Do not want to catch any air in that section. We're going to do a... Yeah, and the good news is, by the way, they both were able to pop right back up, but watch the contact here. Oh, he didn't get a yeah. good jump. He kind of... Yeah, that is unfortunate. Yeah, usually you feed the track under the ski. That time it looked like the track was... Uh, the ski was on top of the track. Yeah, unfortunate, but... Ashline out front early, and... He gets Ooh. rolling. Look out. Ashline yeah. Ken Cruz. And now these guys are going to have to woe up the charge here. They're doing the smart thing going around the outside there with the yellow. But this is the battle for second. And his Anson Shield, the black Amsoil U.S. Air Force Skidoo, running in second, being chased by Whitworth on the Woody's Race Guard cap back in the three spot. That's it. Coming up a little short on that finish line. He needs to clean things up right now. He's got a lot of pressure right now. You can see Whitworth. Oh, look at Anson, though. He gets over that hump and really separates himself. All right, let's see who goes big here at the Anzoil finish line. Oh, yeah. Whitworth's going to take that momentum on the outside and see if he can turn it into the number two spot. Anson tries to counter, but Whitworth's got the preferred line right now. Can he get that triple? No, he doesn't. Yeah, lands just short. So all that ground that he made up in that lap, he gave back in one corner. Meanwhile, Adam Ashline enjoying a pretty comfortable lead right now. He's three and a half seconds to good. That time, Shield did the long jump. Whitworth did not. Yeah, he had to pay attention to his surroundings. He's seen that out of the corner of his eye. He could feel it and hear it. So he wanted to change line up, his line up. And you can see now he's got a little bit more of an advantage going into that top corner. It amazes me that, that those of you that have raced like you, Robbie, they can process and think about this stuff while they're this busy at the office. Yeah, the focus is intense, there's no doubt. And, and you see a little mistake there by Whitworth. So the Anson's starting to check out. He needs to put the hammer down, though, try to get himself closer to Ashline. I know there's only two laps left, but you want to kind of leave it all out there on the track in these heat races just to see where you kind of stack up. Well, you can look ahead and you can actually uh, get a visual on Ashline just busting out of the corner there, the Polaris corner. So the gap has narrowed down a little bit. And it looks like that might have been a bobble for Whitworth. He is uh, falling back on the order as we watch race leader, the 710, Adam Ashline, coming to the Amsoil finish line jump. So he'll get the win to wrap up round one of pro light qualifying, followed by Shiel in second. Whitworth does make it across in third after trading the spot with Kirchmeyer on the final go round. And uh, then Bobby Pagel, who is also a going to be in action in Moto2 of Snowbike a little bit later, and the rest of the finishing order for you. Gross and Todd, by the way, were okay after that gnarly tangle up there in the corner. When we come back with more Amsoil Championship Snowcross, the journey to crown another Amsoil Pro Triple Crown winner begins with race number one.
Welcome back to the ERX Snowcross National here at the beautiful ERX Motor Park at your round facility in the summertime. We visit with Amsoil Championship Off-Road, but it's March. It's winter. And we're getting ready to start the Amsoil Pro Triple Crown with race number one getting in sight lap right now. Let's get our Pertec track report. Robbie, the conditions here, uh, about as good as you can get. It is about perfect for Snowcross and... Nice blue skies out there and temperature sitting at that 32 degrees. This is what we have been waiting for all winter, no doubt. Now, big thanks again to our friends from the Northern Power Race Park out in Michigan. They were a tremendous help to us a couple of rounds ago when we were in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So I want to give a shout out for their regional race action and big thanks for all their help and support of Ants Oil Championship Snowcross. And remember, if a Polaris rider, i.e. Emo Har or Cody Cam, happens to score the Ants Oil Pro Triple Crown overall, you're going to get a free Polaris shop rag. Polaris wins, you win. And you could win a seat cushion if you're here on the grounds with us at ERX. Do that U.S. Air Force Quick Change Challenge. Robbie, is, is that a, uh, as hard as it looks? It's not so bad, but when they turn the clock on and you have to do it as fast as you can, then it becomes difficult. Pressure is on. Tomorrow here on the grounds of the RX, by the way, in the uh, downstairs pavilion area, we'll have our Amsoil Pro autograph session. So if you're coming tomorrow, make sure you mark this. Set a little uh, reminder in your phone so you can go meet these riders face to face. See what they look like with the helmets and the goggles off and get some autographs and some pictures. Good stuff. Field starting to line up for race one of the Enzo Pro Triple Crown. Let's get a pre-race report now with Erica Ulrey. Crown format requires the whole package from a rider. A stellar reaction time on the light, urgency and aggression in the beginning stages of the race, consistency across all three rounds with little to no mistakes, and the endurance and stamina to manage and sprint for the entirety of the rounds. The rider to do it best and remain the undisputed king of the Triple Crown format, the number 31 of Emil Har. In our previous round, he topped both qualifiers, won five out of six rounds, and claimed both overall wins. Will he continue his winning ways here tonight and extend his championship lead even further going into our last round? Or will another rider answer the call and put an end to this incredibly hot streak? Thank you much, Erica. All right, let's give you the Triple Crown 101 if you happen to be watching for the first time or you're not familiar with this format. There are three races. Each race is seven minutes plus a lap. Robbie, what happens with the points? Well, you get a point for what you finish. So first you get one point, two, so on and so forth. But one thing you're gonna wanna pay attention to is that last one, because if you're in a tiebreaker, you wanna finish in front of that competitor because that is gonna give you that overall. And we've seen it countless times. The, the points get really tight going into that third one and the finish in that third race dictates the overall and you can snag a podium all because of one good race. Consistency is key. Jordan LaBelle, your number one qualifier earlier today over Daniel Benham, Cody Cam, Jacob Yerk, Emil Hart qualified fifth. And here we go, we are ready. Ooh, it looked like Yerk moved early. Well, we'll have to leave that one up to the officials. Oh, LaBelle. Oh, yeah, LaBelle got tipped up with somebody else's mess there. Now they all straighten themselves out and they come blasting down and it looks like Benham trying to make his way into the mix there somewhere on the outside. Everybody else stays on the bottom and the moose is loose up front. He sure is. And look at the Articat boys. They're not messing around. Going 2-3 right now. But look at, oh, we got Benham oh, off. Ben yeah, Benham got uh, stuffed up with somebody else. Patnode got collected. He lost a ton of time to the tail end of the lead pack in that one. 
Wow. Emil Haar holding on to the lead here over. Now your second place lead is Oscar Norm. And here comes Yerk Warren back with Peterson right behind. Second, third, and fourth, mixing it up hot and heavy. Yeah, a lot of action early and just trying to fight for a little bit of track position. And you can see how steep and deep those bumps are back there. The rider's really struggling. And look at Oscar. Good to see it. Norm back in the mix. Yeah, Yurk missed the rhythm, but boy, has he got the speed in a straight line as he blows down to the outside of that Polaris corner full tilt and might make the move here coming into the yellow flag zone. Everybody's got to woe up, but Yurk's got the pass locked down. He's into second with 540 plus a lap to go. Maybe not. Here comes Oscar back on the inside. This is going to be preferred line, though. Yurk's going to be able to stay a little lower. And look at this, we're already into traffic because of that wreck early in this race. So it is gonna be tough seeing for the leaders right away. And you can see the sun directly in the racer's eyes as they head up through the Ziggler cat section into the skidoo rhythms before they jump up on that step up into this elevated Arctic Cat FXR corner. And Yurka Peterson bumping some skis there. And look at Yurk, he's starting to close a little bit on Har. Oh, got to take a look. And look who just happened to sneak into the number five spot after getting caught up in that mess at the start. That's Jordan LaBelle getting in the mix. And there goes Peterson saying, see it, Oscar. And that is going to move him up a spot. So Peterson jumping up into third. Yeah, and LaBelle was able to get that triple. So he's got a round. Cody Cam going to be sitting in that fourth. No, still in the fifth spot. So yeah. LaBelle is on the move. Nemo Har holding on to the advantage here by about two and a half seconds. We're at that point usually where if Har is out front, he will start to pull a bigger gap and then sit and manage it the rest of the way. And he just looked over his shoulder. He knows that this is not over yet. Yurk is riding extremely well. And just as I say that, the number three of Peterson, he is not letting up either and oh he almost came off man peterson was at a 45 degree angle to the snow at one point and was still just pegged on the throttle but now he pulls off the track or no that's riley Bester's teammate who has pulled off the track so joy for one team lavalli racer angst for another yeah it is tight racing right now but i tell you what i like what i'm seeing out of peterson right now he is making some moves and he is the fastest man on the track right now. And here comes Jordan LaBelle. We are used to seeing second half race charges from this youngster, and he's pulling another one here. Still got time to work with here as he is battling with Oscar Norm for the third or the uh, fourth position here. And you can see Peterson has moved his way up into that second spot. So he is the man on a move, and he's catching Emil Har right now. So Peterson's found some lines putting them together and right here is where I think he's making a lot of his time watch how he can stay on the gas through this little whoop all the way through and he didn't do it that lap but not before I don't know if there's just something special about the combination of Team Lavalli and ERX but it always seems like when they come into this race it kicks up a notch it sure does and maybe it's the high flying air with Levi telling him hey hit those jumps out there or what I'm not sure but Look at Adam, he is on the bumper of Emil. Actually, he's almost there to take the pass. Yeah, I think Emil looked over his shoulder and was like, wait a minute, where'd you come from? Because Peterson has just been hammered down here. I think Carr thought he could just kind of manage this race to the end, and now he may have to start playing a little bit of defense. Yeah, I think so. And Carr's switching his line up, and I think he... He knows he, he needs to make some changes. And as I say that, look at the gap. He's been able to pull that back out. So he's moving around. Sometimes when you get out front early, you kind of stick to your lines. You don't want to move around too much because you're out front. You don't know where it's faster. And maybe he got caught on a little bit of that. Just stuck taking his lines. So hard putting things through his paces here as we are inside of two minutes plus one lap to go. So when the clock reaches zero, the next time the leader comes to the Emsoil finish line jump, they'll see a white flag. And there's the gap between second and third here between Adam Peterson and Jacob Yurt. Let's get this update from Erica. 
thanks, Paul. What the Kylo race team has been able to do this year is nothing short of amazing. With everybody on the team, they have a total of four members. And I was talking with Jake Yerk earlier, and he said it's low stress, low workload. Everyone wants to do the same thing and has the same goal. Above all the results, at the end of the day, they simply want to be proud of what they've done. And he said it makes for a well-operating machine and team. Robbie, what can that positivity do to a rider's psyche? Well, one thing that it will do is make all those big challenges look a little smaller. And right now, he's sitting in a preferred spot. Third, you want to be close to that podium in this first round, so you give yourself a fighting chance at an overall at the end of the night. And right now, it might turn into a fighting chance for second because it looks like Peterson has backed up to him a little bit. And there's not too much of a gap between those two. There is race leader Emil Hart. By the way, he scored the stud boy hole shot. And he has turned that into the race lead now by a little over four seconds over the battle for that second position. Yeah, Peterson's definitely not gelling like he was earlier. He's kind of slowed up too. His lap times are reflecting of that. You can see Yerkes kept and maintained the same speed, but just as I say that, the, it's kind of a push and pull. They get really close to, to each other and they have top three all within striking distance right now. There's your race leader, Emil Hard, just going off the screen. Yerk ramp in the outside. LaBelle trying to mount a run at him here. And we are going to have two laps left. The clock will hit zero this lap. So the white flag will be the next flag the racers see. And Yerk, he's cutting inside, outside. He's trying to find anything smooth. And you can just see how deep those moguls are back there. But how about Emil Har? Just getting the work yeah. done. Yeah, no mogul is too deep, no jump is too shallow, apparently, for the moose here as he worked his way through from the stud boy hole shot to holding off the challengers and fighting his way up here into the top spot. It's what we're used to seeing out of him in these triple crown formats. And the battle is not over. Last straightaway, Yerk might have the advantage being on that low line. Can he get it done? Oh, so close there at the finish. And pay attention to that. That is going to be huge at the end of the night. That one position, those two are going to battle it out for a podium spot, no doubt. So Emil Har doing Emil Har things, winning the first leg of the Enzoil Pro Triple Crown by tick over two seconds over Peterson, who had to hold his breath to beat Yerk to the line. LaBelle comes through with a nice comeback ride for fourth. Cody Cam is fifth. Now let's go down to... Uh, we're going to check in here in one second. No, nope. they're telling me that uh, we'll try to check in with Erica in a moment, see if she can get a word with Emil Har. Of course, Emil uh, just picking up the victory here in the first leg of the Amsoil Pro Triple Crown. Up next, we are getting ready for our Pro-Am Women Final. But let's go down to Erica now. Go ahead. Emil, from whole shot to checkers, a flawless race for you. You were able to kind of sneak on the inside here off the start. So what opportunity did you see early on? Uh, I was actually on the outside when I was able to get the good start. Uh, yeah, it was a good race. Track is rough, but it's fun. Looking forward to seeing you back out there for round two. So Emil, one third of the way through what he'd like to accomplish, another overall triple crown. The Pro-Am women will take to the track when we return to the ERX Snowcross National here on Flow Racing. <laughs> 